I'm here in Bangalore on, a, on a, the journey of pucker teas and pucker herbs. Um, and it's a journey that's been going on for 12 years. And I want to share some of that journey with you this morning and uh, to give you an insight and uh, the experiences we've had in, and the joy that we've had in making delicious herbal teas for the last 12 years. Um, and um, I'd like to really go back to the very, very beginning. Um, I think what I'm going to do today is just go through the history of Paka, um, where we came from, what we're really about, um, how come we're doing what we're doing type thing. Uh, and then I'll, what I'd like to do is to, we'll go through and talk about some of the herbal teas that we've got here. Um, so, um, as you all probably know, Paka originates from India. It's a, it's a word in Hindi which means real, authentic, genuine, top quality. Um, and it, it's a word that uh, we, we aspire to in everything that we do at Paka. Um, we aspire to being the best, to being providing the best quality, and um, to giving the best to everyone that we make our teas for. So it's been quite a journey, and um, through the journey we've now got over 30, 35, 37 herbal teas, fruit and herbal teas. Um, and back in the UK, we also make Ayurvedic supplements and herbal remedies. Um, so we've got a real expertise and understanding of, of herbs, but we're here today primarily just to talk about the, the teas that we're very excited to launch in, in Bangalore. And Bangalore is a garden city of India. We thought it'd be great here in the garden city, the greenest city, to launch green, natural teas into India. So we're very pleased to be here today to do that. Um, so um, if I track back through the history of Pukka, um, my kind of background before we started Pukka was that I was involved in, in the computer industry, a bit like Bangalore in some ways. There's a lot of IT and services and the computer industry is very strong here. And um, I uh, was involved in marketing and selling systems and helping businesses grow. grow. Uh, around Europe and um, uh, in some ways really uh, enjoy the excitement of helping businesses grow but really didn't find it very uh, purposeful or sustainable for myself. So for some reason I felt something was missing when I was um, kind of working in that space. Um, some people call it the rat race. I uh, felt it was a bit rat racing at times. Um, so I decided I didn't want to do it anymore and just gave up completely. So um, I stopped working. Um, couldn't decide what I wanted to do, but decided I needed to explore myself, um, and went on a journey of, rather than going traveling around the world, I stayed at home and read books, and, and was really interested in nature. Um, particularly when I was in my late 20s, I'd been diagnosed with a back problem, and uh, it took a long time for the doctors to diagnose what it was, but it was a form of rheumatoid arthritis, and the doctor said to me, this is your life, here's the painkillers, here are the anti-inflammatories. So I took the painkillers and anti-inflammatories and I felt spaced out, I felt very ill, my tummy was not, you know. I got very depressed the fact that I was going to live the rest of my life on painkillers and anti-inflammatories. So I started to go on a journey and understand a bit more about nutrition and what I could do for myself. Um, so that was happening in parallel to, to my life and I, I took notes of that. And when I had, again, had this time to reflect on that in the few months I had off, um, I, kind of built up a picture of what I wanted to be involved in, which is nature, organics, uh, caring for the environment. Um, and um, in February of 2001, I put a little quirky little advert in a, in a magazine in, in, in Bristol, which is called Venue. It's like the time out, I don't know if people know the time out in London, where you, you kind of look at what's going on in restaurants, and what's on in cinema, and so on. So we have a little, if Bristol's a little city, it's only half a million people down in the west country of England and um, put this little advert in and after two weeks I got a grand total of one response uh, and, um, and this was from a guy called Sebastian, uh, Sebastian Paul and Sebastian previously had been, uh, he, he did a degree in London, had learned to speak Hindi, had been travelling around India on and off for seven to ten years and discovered yoga and Ayurveda, uh, we both do yoga, practice yoga as well. And um, through that, uh, when he came back to the UK, he qualified as, a, as an Ayurvedic practitioner and a, and a Chinese medical herbalist. And 
he had all this kind of key knowledge about herbs uh, that he wanted to bring alive into people's lives. So um, we, he was really lacking um, the insight and how to do that in the business sense. And so we, we met um, after the, uh, the advert. I placed uh, uh, a quick time together in his, in his office, in actually not his office, in his uh, herb room study. And uh, more or less straight away, it was like a meeting of minds, a meeting of spirits. Uh, and Sebastian and I just decided there on the spot that we were going to start a company to bring the power of herbs alive into people's lives. Um, we didn't know how we'd do that because I've never worked in shops or retail or made products and he never developed a business before as well. Um, and so um, through that um, we went to um, uh, think about developing a company and what could we call this company? Um, so we played with lots of names and we came with the name Pucker because of our affection with, with India, um, because we work with Ayurveda. Ayurveda is kind of our guiding philosophy in what we do, um, not just in our own personal health, but as a business. So we wanted to set up a business with a purpose first that would make a profit, and then if we make a profit, we can serve the purpose. So um, the purpose was to bring the power of herbs alive and to create a more conscious world, basically. And what I mean by conscious is I think that we're there's a desire that we're all kind of, if we take a moment out in our lives, we're all trying to kind of live a healthier life and want to live a happier, healthier life. But sometimes we forget that because we're on the run, we're doing this, we're doing that. Um, and so we thought if we could make an amazing cup of tea and bring people back in contact with nature, uh, then perhaps that would bring them back into contact with their lives and the wonder of the power of herbs. So it was a big, grand idea. Um, but we um, had no experience at all, so we, I had a neighbor who was a, a graphic designer and we came up with uh, designing the first tees. Um, we were, both went to the cash point, and got two and a half thousand pounds out of the, cap of the bank each, and we started and formed the company at the end of 2001. Um, uh, we placed our order for our first uh, raw materials with, with Surya and uh, Falada um, from India and from other parts of Europe. Um, and like most things from India, it took a long time to arrive to, um, in terms of the materials came through eventually. And so we were able to launch our first teas, our first three teas into, into the UK in um, spring 2002. Um, and we were so inspired by Ayurveda, we went a bit crazy. We called them Kapha, Pitta and Vata tea. So I don't know if you know Vata, Pitta, Kapha in Ayurveda, but those are the constitutions of Ayurveda. Um, People kind of liked the taste, but they had no idea what kapha, pitta, and vata meant. So, so after a short while, we decided to rename the teas, um, revitalize, which is the kapha, which, which is stimulating kapha, uh, refresh, and relax. So we still have these teas today, and um, we have these two of those teas here in, in India that we're launching with, which is the relax and the revitalize tea. So they've started uh, with us so many years ago, they stood a long test of time with us, and they're still the same form as the same blends. So um, it's been a real journey of excitement to bring all these, these teas together. Um, one of the things that we've had to do is cope with growth. So um, you know, in our first our first year, we probably um, made around about I don't know um, thirty thousand boxes of tea. Um, and this week we finish our our twelfth financial year. And we'll have ended up making 15 million boxes of tea. So from like 30,000 boxes to 15 million boxes. You can imagine that's quite a journey. So, um, from starting off in my spare bedroom, in my, my flat, my apartment in Bristol, there's now 75 people that work in Pucker. Um, and they, they, they vary from our sourcing team, so herbalists, botanists, organic agriculturists who are going out coming out to the fields and growers in the Western Ghats where we work on, we're actually working on certain projects to protect land. There's a nature conservation area in the Western Ghats that we're involved in protecting old habitat. Uh, to other areas in Kazakhstan where we um, get all the Krish. Um, and all parts of the world where in, in, in uh, Middle America, Eastern Europe. So 
the idea is that we bring all these herbs, and that these are the finest herbs that can find, really, the finest parts of the plant, the most medicinal grade herbs, herbs that are used in medicine normally, and bring them into the teas. So the herbs come from all around the world, and we bring them back into the UK, and then in the UK we make the teas. So there's a team of people controlling the whole process from the source and the fields, working with the farmers and growers locally here in India, or in South Middle America, or in Europe, um, right through to selling and marketing our teas. Um, all our teas are organic. We think that's the only way. We, we don't like to compromise on anything else. It's got to be organic. Organic for us means it's the best for, the, for our health. It's the best for taste. And it's also the best for the health of the, the earth. The farmers and growers who have to pick, um, they don't have to uh, grow uh, herbs with pesticides. They naturally uh, just grow them. Um, the, the land, the, the, the earth is losing its fertility at the moment because of non-organic practices with pesticides. So we believe that organic regenerates the earth and the soil. And it really is all part of our mission of connecting people and plants and the planet. So we are really all interconnected in our lives. Um, sometimes we um, uh, forget that when we're working very fast. But the idea of Pucker is to provide this platform to remember this interconnection between people, plants, and the planet. And um, we've just recently, last week, relaunched our website. We, we, we codenamed it Pucker Planet. If you want to go to PuckerHerbs.com, you'll be you'll go and find a lot of stories in there about the herbs and the people that make up Pucker. Um, so, as we're doing this, and we've created the first from 30,000 tea boxes to 15 million tea boxes, there's real there's a real lot of care and attention that goes into ensuring. Um, that we take care of the environment and the habitat we bring in the herbs from. So, um, some of our herbs are, some of the teas are fair trade, so that means they've been traded fairly and stamped fairly accordingly. And some of our teas are something called fair wild. And fair wild is like fair trade, but it means that the herbs have come from a sustainable place. So, I, I don't know if you know this, but something like 60 or 70% of the herbs that are the use in products, in teas or remedies or supplements, they come from the wild. And there's no guarantee that, that that wild environment where the herbs come from is, is uh, being looked after, i.e. that is um, people just pick things out from the wild, they forget to look after it and replenish it. Furwell is a new certification body set up by a charity um, uh, to ensure that endangered species stay, uh, stay uh, alive and um, very well the certification we're really encouraging a lot more companies to be aware of uh, and consumers to be aware of and it protects the habitat <laughs> of the herbs as well. Um, so all the way through sustainability is really important to us. Um, in the UK we use green energy, we, we are zero landfill so everything we use is recycled. recycled. Um, so um, all the way through we, we, we aim to be try to be pucker really. Um, so in a few minutes we'll maybe get some teas ready in a few moments. Uh, uh, we're going to try some teas in a few moments. So it's been a real journey um, and um, and through that process we've our, our business has developed from in the UK where we sell our teas into natural health food stores. Um, we sell them to high-end supermarkets like, I don't know if you know the UK, but Waitrose and Sainsbury's and, and Tesco's. Um, and half our business in the UK, the other half is international, so we're selling our teas in Scandinavia uh, and in Germany and other parts of Europe, most of Europe. We also sell our teas in America uh, and Japan and Australia. And I'm off to Hong Kong this afternoon to explore the opportunity of taking a of teas to Hong Kong, Hong Kong and China. So it's, it's a real privilege to be here um, in India and in Bangalore, the home of um, so many great herbs, the home of so much wisdom, uh, uh, and the home of Ayurveda, and the home of the word Pukka, really. It feels like, we, obviously this is my home, but it feels like Pukka's coming home in a way. It's a, quite a special moment for us here to be here today for this. Um, so it's put, we're 12 years into our journey. Um, this is our first few weeks into India. Um, we 
very excited about the opportunities that uh, we can bring to help um, create a bit, more, a bit more of a conscious world in India um, and to contribute as little or as great as we can to with that in terms of um, allowing people to understand uh, about the flavours and the benefits of herbal teas.